Bear markets can be both frustrating and exciting. So how do I plan to survive this current bear market? Stay tuned, this is going to be a big one. What is up miners and welcome back to the 3Fox Company YouTube channel. There are two things that will make you either profitable or unprofitable. One, efficiency of your GPUs. The more efficient your GPUs is, the less power you are using for the same hash rate. As simple as that. And number two, the cost of electricity. This is the big one that shakes out a lot of people from mining fast. In this video, I will show you how I am getting cheaper electricity and you can also. Now you would be wondering, how is this even possible to get cheaper electricity? What the hell is this guy talking about? Yes, I'm talking about this behind me, solar power. The answer to my inflated electricity supplies lies in the power of the sun. Solar energy is free, we just have to harvest and use it. I currently have a solar system installed, but it's not offsetting my power cost enough. And in the current market conditions, staying profitable is a real challenge. So I decided to upgrade my existing system. The current price of electricity from my power utility is 18 cents. I'm able to offset this with my existing solar system to 11 cents, but it's not enough to stay profitable. My aim is to get closer to 5 cents and yes, it is possible. When I was doing the design for the upgrade, there were a lot of factors to consider. Things like available roof space, cost, current and future power draw and usage, installation methods, return on investment, and the list goes on. Let me show you what I installed before the upgrade. This will give you an idea of what it looked like before and after the upgrade. So this is my current installation in my garage of my solar inverter system. So basically I've got my power utility that's coming in on the prepaid meter. Then I've got this tiny little distribution board. Now this distribution board we will replace today. I will put in a much bigger one where basically I can install my utility connection, my non-essential equipment and my essential equipment. So how this works is from the main power utility, I'm feeding into a small distribution board just for the AC power for my inverter. So this is a SunSync 5 kilowatt hybrid bi-directional inverter, which means that I can actually feed from the solar DC side into the inverter. The inverter I can charge my batteries at the bottom and I can also use the DC converted to AC onto the grid side of the electrical system. So I can feed both my UPS side and I can feed the grid side simultaneously if I've got solar PV installed. Also should I have a power failure on the utility side my batteries will automatically convert the DC back into AC and then feed the UPS side of the inverter. I've also got a backup generator so if we maybe have extended times of utility downtime and my batteries are running low so then I can start this is a 6.5 kVA diesel generator so then I can feed this into my inverter system and then I can charge my batteries and feed my grid side while the utility is off. The first step was to remove the old small distribution board and fit a new one. I had to ask the municipality to switch off the main supply as it's not advisable to work on live equipment. After the new distribution board backplate was fitted, then I installed new cableways, moving the existing inverter and installed the parallel inverter. I also installed new cables for the whole system, including the distribution board, inverters and the battery system. I added the additional lithium batteries in the 19 inch server rack, bringing my total storage capacity to 600 amp hours in total, which is plenty. After the distribution board, inverter and battery system installation was completed, it was time to move to the top of the roof to install the hardware for the solar panels. As you can see, I have a tiled roof which makes fitting the hardware much more challenging when compared to corrugated roof sheets or shingles. In order to get the mounting brackets fitted and secured, I had to slide open a tile at each mounting location. After the mounting brackets were secured to the roof trusses, the tile slides back into its original position and you can see that it fits nicely. The brackets I'm using is made from stainless steel, which is great for longevity, especially when living in a coastal region like I do. It's a simple but effective design and it gets the job done. 
after the mounting brackets were installed, I secured the aluminum extrusions to the brackets, which will be the mounting platform for the solar panels. Finally, it was time to install the DC cabling on the roof and mount the solar panels. This was quite a labor intensive exercise due to the size and weight of each panel. In total, I installed 14 panels, 10 on the garage roof and four on the roof of the office. The solar panels are wired in series to elevate the overall DC voltage, making two strings of seven panels each. Each string has an open circuit voltage of 341 volts, which allows me to use a much thinner gauge cable to deliver the theoretical 2660 watts per string. Once the installation of both the solar arrays and the inverter system were completed, all the cableways, distribution boards and equipment were boxed up and ready for testing. I drew up a checklist of items to check and verify before powering up the system, which includes the polarity of the cables, parallel communication between the inverters, communication between the inverter and the battery management system. You get the idea. So in summary, what do I have installed after the upgrade? Now I have two five kilowatt bi-directional hybrid inverters installed, which runs in parallel, providing me with 10 kilowatts of constant power on the UPS side of the inverter. I'm not limited to 10 kilowatts, as I can also use the solar PV on the grid side of the inverter. My batteries have been upgraded from 300 amp hours to 600 amp hours, which gives me plenty of energy storage capability for nighttime use. Lastly, my existing 5.5 kilowatt solar array now has been upgraded to 10.84 kilowatts, which depending on the season has the capability of generating up to 60 kilowatt hours per day. Now the testing and data collection phase is starting and its performance will be measured over a period of months. So theoretically, I should be able to offset my electrical cost from the current 18 cents to as low as five cents, which is a huge factor in profitability, especially in these current market conditions. Now the question is, should everyone invest in solar? Well, there will be many answers to this question and it all boils down to your geographic location, your budget, your goals, if you have rented or owned property, just to name a few. For me, it makes perfect sense as it does not only offset my power costs significantly, but it adds value to my property and increases the sale value should I wish to sell the property in the future. On average, the lifespan of a solar system is 20 to 25 years. Also, normally the ROI on a solar system is in excess of seven years, sometimes much longer for finance systems, but with my current and planned future power usage for mining, and if I do not include any annual price power increases, then the ROI will be 62 months or sooner. Please tell me if you like to see future updates on the performance of my solar system and what the real savings are when compared to the design calculations. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you haven't seen this video or this video, then make sure to check them out next. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you in the next video.